OK, thank you. Uh, 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 OK, there were. OK. So f first of all, that, that introduction was perfect, because as, as, as he just mentioned a second ago, yeah, you're, you're going to see that this is barely scratching the surface. Really? Like, most of the things that you that the examples that I'm going to share right now are going to be fairly simplistic. I think that you can go back to your house, basically open the browser, and almost find what, what you're going to see. But still, that there there's some interest from actors. So that's a good introduction to the topic. But also to be on the same line, I want to mention what we're going to be talking about right now is uh, I'm going to be giving examples, sharing some of the stories from my threat intelligence team. And I, I want to share some of the cases that we see, what is it that the actors are doing, uh, some of the interesting things they are doing, and some of the funny ones that have made absolutely no sense, but they didn't know, obviously. Um, and yeah, well, that's how we, we begin with, with this topic. Uh, for some background, just, uh, well, I'm Mexican. I was working in the US many years. Now I'm in Amsterdam, moving all over the place. Uh, I'm currently leading the team for cyber physical threat intelligence in uh, Mandiant. So, when I say cyber physical, what it means for those of you who, who know the concept, it's operational technology, industrial control systems, anything that can have a physical impact in the world whenever you interact with this software, right? It can be something in a water facility, it can be something in energy facility, it can be in a car, it can be in anything that can have a physical implication. And we just gather information, try to put up the story, and share it in such a way that you know, it might raise awareness and help different organizations. I wanted to start strong with, with some image that, that seemed, you know, like, like impactful. And I was just thinking, okay, this case is very beautiful. In June 2020, I believe, there were news about a series of um, explosions in, in Iran. And what they were saying is, in the beginning, they said, well, you know, someone actually came and implanted some physical device. And in a different source, what they would say is, someone actually did a cyber attack against blah, blah. And actually, one of the impacted sources, impacted targets, sorry, was Natans. For those of you that know of some ICS cybersecurity archaeology, Natans is the facility where Stuxnet happened. Again, Stuxnet, one of the few pieces of cyber physical uh, malware that basically uh, delayed the, the, the nuclear uh, process by destroying or, or damaging some of the, um, the centrifuges. The, for, for, for the production of, of these nuclear facilities. I'm not going to get in depth in that case. If you want, it's archaeology, but really just Google Stuxnet. It's, a, it's, Stuxnet. it's amazing. But the point here is we saw these explosions. The news started saying that. And whether it's true or it's not true, it doesn't matter. Because for some people, it was true. And as you might know, now we get back to, the, to this point, whatever happens in Iran, immediately, like publicly, Israel is blamed. Whatever happens in Israel, immediately, publicly, Iran is blamed. So this is what happened here. They said, of course, it, it's Israel. I don't know, and who knows? But then we started looking into, into you know, like, like the forums, different forums where we check what the attackers are doing, and we found this. And what the attackers were saying is, in retaliation for the explosions in Iran, we are going to go and blow up anything we can in Israel, and we're, it's going to be terrible, and we're going to find all of the devices that we want. And this is what they, what they dropped. Look, we are terrible. They shared some videos, showed us how they were playing with, this, with these panels. Parenthesis, these panels control physical processes. But here goes the question. First of all, have you ever seen a gas system, or do you know what a gas system is, I, I, even if it is something? You know, it sounds kind of sketchy, right? Because you know, for, for, for handling any type of gas, uh, oil and gas processes, you need many different systems. So to begin with, who knows what this is? So we saw that, and we decided, let's go and research, right? Normally, what we do is go and figure out what is it that the actor is actually seeing. And we went immediately to Shodan. Those who don't know the service, I'm going to talk a bit more about that. But basically, it's a, a browser, literally www.shodan.com. And there are a couple similar browsers where you go and try to find anything that is exposed to the internet. So if you know what to look for, you can find it. You can find cameras. You can find tank, uh, we call it tank gadgets. You can find, uh, I don't know, any type of processes as long as they are exposed via internet and to the ports you're looking for, services you're looking for, and whatnot. So anyway, we, we went and looked, and we corroborated, yeah, there was no authentication. It was disabled. So yeah, the actor definitely had access to this. Uh, we corroborated, you know, th that image is taken directly from Shodan as well. And, you know, we started getting all the, the data. Now, the point in here is, 
the next question for us, like as, as, in, on the analysis side, we check like what, what is this, right? Well, I mean, it says dumpers, it says sucked demand. There's something weird. Let's figure out what it is. And then we actually figured out what it is, and it was probably the actors didn't really know what they were looking because the retaliation was a bit poor. It was a kitchen system. It was a kitchen ventilation system. Yes, in Israel, but you know, just a kitchen. You know, as interesting as it can be. So, actually, the image you see here is the site where they used to have like the actual kitchen and the system. But you know, after everything happened, and I don't know, or maybe they just changed the product and they just now it's down. I should have saved it. It's bad for bad, bad practice not to. But yeah, so that, that is actually like the big retaliation that these terrible actors were actually doing, uh, trying to destroy the world, and. The interesting thing as well is, at least, you know, like to give them some credit, everything that you've seen here, it does correspond to very similar technologies, which is, again, kind of scary, right? So they have similar types of controllers. Sometimes they have similar types of uh, what we call human machine interfaces, which are like this image you saw. And sometimes they even use the same products. It just sometimes not. It depends, you know, it goes from vendor to vendor, whatever. But in the end, you know, the, the, the point is it's so easy to find that is also so difficult to know what you're looking at, and it can be something very important or very unimportant, as in this case. I'm going to give more examples. But before going to examples, I mean, what you're going to ask is, yeah, why, why is this guy in front of us talking to us about kitchens, right? I mean, like, yeah, we, we, we don't care about hacking kitchens. Well, for, first, I, I want to introduce you, right, like, like to, to the trend, and then we'll, we'll see the other examples where this becomes a bit more concerning. Um, th this, this image that you see here is something that I call the de-evolution. Of, uh, of cyber physical threats. And the point is, normally when you think about, I don't know, any type of malware, hacking, computers, whatever, the process started being something very simple. Someone created this, I don't know, this specific malware, it has worm like capabilities, it goes everywhere, then someone says, I do an antivirus, I find it. You know, it's all, always like, you know, I do something more complex, then I respond. Complex, defend, complex, defend. But in the case of cyber physical, we have exactly the opposite. It seems that we have some governments specifically developing very complex techniques. And then as they continue to evolve, then more simple actors started finding ways to get to this type of physical systems. So we started with, of course, state sponsored like Stuxnet, like, like Triton, like, you know, big cases. And then eventually we started seeing recently the, fi the, the financial actors. So basically the cases of ransomware that you see oftentimes, well, not, not oftentimes, but at least in some occasions have reached uh, control systems, and you can tell by some analysis on, on, on basically on the, on the malware samples. Um, and, and, and then we go even more simple, which is this case when you're talking about hacktivist or opportunist actors, right? Like for me, a hacktivist historically is, has always been the one that says, I dump this database. I place this on your website and say, you know, you're terrible. You shouldn't be here. But now you're saying that what they are trying to do is figuring out how can I generate a different impact? What if I go and do something physical? And when you consider all the things that are exposed, all, all the physical things that are exposed, then again, it gets a bit scary. Although, you know, not to exaggerate, I'm, I'm going to be very careful to maintain the nuance to what they can do or not. So this activity we refer to as low sophistication compromises. And what, they, what, what they're categorized for is basically compromises in which normally the actor is not, you know, it's not a group, it's not well-researched, it's not like, like or, or maybe a, a small group of individuals, but not like a criminal group, not a nation state, not, nothing like that. We're also referring to cases that most often refer to just literally finding internet connected assets and then figuring out how to connect to them and start it moving. So oftentimes they are fairly simplistic and you're gonna see a bit more about those cases, but it's, it's fairly simplistic. And oftentimes what the actors want is Either, you know, sometimes, yeah, they want to sell, they want to make money, but sometimes they just want, you know, it's reputation. It's very funny, but for some reason, every time one of these actors posts something in there, the others seem to think like, oh yeah, he's really terrible. He hacked a, a gas system. And then when you actually analyze that, that, you know, what actually really happens, it might be more simple, but they get that reputation that they want. And all of this is underground and public forums, you know, just like all the, all the types of, of, of actors that we follow. And the reason why we started looking into this activity and trying, you know, like bringing it up to everyone is, is because we, we realized that, that the numbers were kind of increasing. This is nothing new. It has happened for a couple of years. But eventually, all of a sudden, we were seeing like, you know, that every week our researchers had like these new actors interested. Now they want to know more. Now they are doing this. Now they are doing that. And that is when it became interesting. It's like, why is there suddenly so many people interested? And, and it's good because you learn about security. It's bad because what could happen? 
So what you see in here in this diagram, whoops, in this diagram is uh, on the left side, it's difficult to see all the cases, but on the left side, what you find are public cases. Those are uh, examples where there was an advisory from a government, where there was, uh, you know, someone denounced this to the authority, someone, you know, there was something public. And the cases on the right are cases that are not public, that we are tracking, but that, you know, no one, no one knows, or, or maybe just the victim, if they even realize that they were compromised or why weird things were happening. In these cases, there are, there are different types of activity as well. Some of them, they just go and look into what's, what's going on. Some of them expose a ton of devices. They say like, hey, look, I found all of these devices that you can go and connect to. So just go and do whatever makes you have fun. Um, some of them instead um, go and interact with the process. Those are the most concerning because actually they, they don't care and they, they might not know what they're doing, but they can do it. And some of them share tutorials so that, you know, if anyone else wants to go and join the club, then you can just do it. So well, I'm, I'm probably skip this, but, but I already mentioned a bit the point. Why do these guys do it? Reputation. Most of the times they just want to be, I don't know, they just want the other actors to know that they can do it, even though it's not so complicated. But since many people don't know it and you're going to learn the secret right now, you will be able to do it as simple as all of them. But the second type is money. Yeah, oftentimes they share it and they are trying to monetize. I don't know why, because it doesn't seem like they are selling much but they go and try to monetize. And the other one is why not? You know, the same reason why we, many of us are here, right? It's just like, I have a device in front. Uh, can I do something to it? Yeah, well, let's do it, right? It's fun. So to categorize a bit of this, uh, of all what, what we see of these categories, we check like a bit in, in underground forums. There are different places where you can see these this attacks, but in underground forums, at least, uh, we categorize a bit of the numbers. And it turns out that, yeah, most people definitely, what they want to do is figure out how to make money out of this. Not surprising. Uh, the least are doing threats. It's, it's very interesting, but sometimes they are just like, hey, I'm going to go and blow up anything I can. Nothing has happened like that normally when they say it, but they go and, they go and say it, and then they drop kitchens and stuff. Um, and yeah, well, so this is just like, like, a, like an overview of generic of, of the behavior of, of these actors. And to finish this part of the trends, I'm trying to go quickly through the trends so I can give just more stories. I find them much more amusing. Um, how do they get the control to these processes? So there are three simple steps. The first one, I mean, like most often, there are other, other cases, but most often it's as simple as this. The first one, just finding the favorite search engine that you want. Uh, there are many, uh, FOFA, Shodan, Census, Binary Edge has a capability. Any of those where you can go and search for what is internet connected. If you know what to search for again, then you can go and, and identify at least some examples to go and play with. And uh, sometimes, sometimes you can even do Google, Google dorking. There are some cases that, that you're going to see here that if you want to find an industrial controller, literally just Google how to find an industrial controller. And there are some, some queries that are already done, and you always find the same ones online. So it's like they've never learned about it. Or oftentimes you find, I don't know, some of our consultants really enjoy just going and finding uh, industrial controllers exposed, and then just reaching out, figuring out who the, the owner is, because you know, like just go and play the detective. You, they reach out to the owner and they're like, hey, you know, you own this small car wash, but you have this exposed. I don't know how you set it up, but please fix it. And they just, I don't know, they just find it like something very amazing. And then you choose, you find what are the panels that, that, that you're interested in. Uh, this case, for example, is something about, it, it's like for air quality in a building. But, you know, we have found all sorts of, of panels. I'm, I'm, in, in the examples, you're going to see more. Um, and then finally, click, show off. Really, it's, it's not difficult to, to, to connect to one of these. Uh, you just use, I don't know, some of them you can go to via Teams Viewer, build via VNC connections, via, I don't know, like sometimes RDP. It, it's not really that, 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 that you know, any, any secret for, for most of you guys that I know that you do much more complicated stuff. So this, you know already the trend, you know what, what are the actors, what, are, what they're doing, what type of activity I'm referring to. We are talking about like physical type of compromises that are super simple, that are just everyone's doing them right now. And, well, we want to know what, what, what are you talking about? Like, because we saw a kitchen, but what else can you find? So this is, this is one of my favorites. This is from, um, hmm, I'm going to say beginning of 2021. Uh, I, I'm not sure this, this reached to Europe. It, it actually was a case from, from the US. And it's in a place, in a remote place called Oldsmar, Florida. And in Oldsmar, Florida, the reason why we heard about this case, most often times we, we wouldn't hear, is because they went to the authorities, and then the authorities went to the newspapers, and then everyone started figuring out what happened. And so what happened is, 
the basically all of a sudden you have the operator, you know, the, the, this person in the plant that's sitting down in a water facility, just like checking that everything is in order in those screens, like, like the ones that I keep on showing. And then all of a sudden the screen starts moving and, and the amount of chemicals in the water, it was uh, sodium hydroxide, I believe, uh, starts increasing like crazy. So this person immediately says like, okay, no, there's something weird. I'm going to fix it. They fix it and they, you know, like, like they send information. Why is this important? Well, this is, this is actually going to be very fun, but those two uh, documents that you see in there, uh, they are my mother's work because when she heard about this case, she was like, she's a chemist, uh, chemistry teacher at the university and she was like, I want to teach my students and I want to make a problem and I want to tell them this is the modification that someone did in this water. What would happen to the human body if they were to drink it? If you want to have nightmares, go and search in Google and go and search what happens when the pH of water is too high and if you drink it and you can have nightmares. I mean, they're horrible images, right? You can imagine it just burns, burns your esophagus and, and destroys your stomach entirely. Um, so yeah, I mean, that, that's on you, but the point in here is the attack actually, you know, like had that potential of modifying a physical parameter that can result in an individual being seriously harmed. Would that, does that mean that it was going to happen? Maybe not, you know, because they're in an engineering facility, you would expect them to have more safety measures. And yes, normally they do. So in this case, there were additional processes. But still, it showed how easy it was for an individual externally to get access to this Teams viewer via a compromise endpoint and eventually, you know, just modify the quality of the water that gets to your house. Again, nothing bad happened, but, you know, it's... Um, so what, what we did with this was we went to Google Dorking as well. We tried to find more information. Uh, we have reason to believe that this is the panel and what the, uh, the attacker actually saw. No one knows really, but, but the, the truth is just that, you know, since companies on the cyber physical side, on operational technologies, whatnot, are, have not really, are, are much behind in security, they haven't thought about many of the, of the things that we consider normal for security. So this panel actually was present in, in a vendor, in a third party vendor, that actually was announcing like, hey, we did all this work for them. We designed this and we designed their HMIs and we designed that. So we just found it. Uh, we realized that there they have that measurement. So very lucky it's that one. We notified them. It is, not, it is now down, of course, from the website. And well, it just like, like shows one of the, of the challenges on, on OT security. Because of course, this is information you need to make such an attack. Now the second one, it, this is also concerning. I begun with the concerning ones and then they go more simple. Uh, the second concerning one was, was in Israel, precisely. There was um, a notification, an advisory from, from their security agency. I can't read that, that's why I just translated it there. Normally I wouldn't add so much text, but in case you were curious. Basically what they were saying is, one day in the morning they just issued this notification and said, all companies for water and energy in, you know, in, in the region, please uh, basically remove or protect your assets that you have connected to internet, change your passwords, and do A, B, C, and D. As simple as that. But the reason why they were saying it is because something actually happened. Apparently, in different uh, water facilities, they, they had compromises. These compromises, though, were a bit more complicated than, than the normal, you know, like, like case where I say like something is an internet and then, you know, they just go and click. They were an internet, yeah. But what the actors actually did, we, we assume it's similar actors, but, but, you know, there are many things to discuss in there. This is actually what they did. I'm showing basically on MITRE techniques, which is kind of like, like an easy way to, to translate what, what, was, what the actor did. Um, basically, they modified what we call the, the control logic. To, for those that are not familiar with, with control logic, what it means is just the language that, that, that an industrial controller, which is like a not so clever computer that just you know, sets input, manages inputs and outputs in a clever way, um, basically, and it's handled by this ladder logic, that's what we call it, and control logic. So basically, the actors actually removed this logic and modified, which means that they actually knew what they were looking at. They were looking at industrial controllers, they knew what they were doing, and they decided to deliberately modify that. And again, that is something that is controlling a physical process. Physical, in this case, again, for water. It's no surprise that water facilities often tend to be impacted by this, because, I mean, you can imagine, how, how much does water cost for you? It's really low, right? Or at least in most places. Well, basically, where are you going to get money for cybersecurity? In energy, it, they're, they're going much further and it's considered like critical and whatever. Water, even though it's much more critical, in most places, it's underfunded. So normally they have teams, security teams that might have one or two people 
maybe one of them is OT security, the other one is IT, and that's as much, you know, like in Oldsmar, the same guy that handled the entire network had to handle the security. So, you know, it's no surprise that these things can, can, can happen and because they don't have the money to go and pay like to the, to the big corporations to go and, and, and help on these type of cases. So, a third case, hacktivism. Um, this is actually tied to the past one. For, those, for that period of time during, I don't know, like June, July, August in that year, um, there was a ton of, of cases that happened actually with Israel because again, we see these actors that they respond to something like, like in, in, you know, in the news or, or something in geopolitical context. And then they go down and they say like, hey, okay, we're gonna go and mess up with whatever we can. And so in this case, again, another actor that just went and released these uh, images. Again, they were, well, the images and the accesses that were specifically, um, well, this is like a mining, mining type of system. I mean, like for supporting mining uh, logistics. Uh, the second one is for solar panels. Again, it's, it's less critical than the water for sure, but it, you know, it shows again like, like type of what the actors are trying to do and how they are trying to translate this type of hacktivism behavior into the physical world. Another example, because we have many. Yes, more actors, prolific group. Okay, another group that one day they just woke up and decided, let's go and find many of these panels. So they found hundreds and then they shared them. Then we go, we validate, yes, they exist. We form the companies, they are all over the world. Some of them important, some of them not. We're not gonna analyze one by one, but there were things like this. This could be as well from a facility, but this could also be as well like from the pool in your home, and this could be as well from, you know, wherever. So some of them are very sensitive, some of them are not, basically. Uh, which is also one of the reasons why it's so difficult to go and filter what is the, the, the impact. And some of them are doing their homework. This is another case that's very interesting because they claim that what they want to do is raise awareness. No one knows who they are, no, we don't know if it's research or not, they don't claim to be research, they just say we want to raise awareness. So they share tutorials, they say what they are doing, they say how they did it, they share many of these panels. The two on the left, yeah, hold on, your left, is uh, those two are actually controllers, I mean, like, like the panels, how you access a, the, the industrial controller. And the other two, very funny, they just found this, this panel that seemed to be something about nuclear facility, probably it was old, we, we don't believe this was actually in use. Uh, but then what they decided is, is let's go to the encyclopedia and let's find some examples. So they went to the encyclopedia and in their paper, in the research, they, they share, you know, like, hey, this is what we did, this is how it looks like, this is what it is for, you know, and try to explain the process. It's not really rocket science, but when you analyze, they are actually doing it right. What they are doing is trying to learn about the process they are compromising so that they can go and generate the impact that they desire. And all of this is something, if you realize, I haven't said anything that, that anyone in this room cannot do. Basically, it is fairly, fairly, fairly doable and mainly with the super great skills that, that are concentrated in here. And the last example, like, like, in, like generic example, is uh, this one is from a hotel. It's a, a major hotel in, um, in an English speaking country. Um, and basically, yeah, the actors, they got access again, they show a full video, they say, this is what I'm doing at the hotel, this is what I'm doing. They show how they go and modify, blah, blah. We don't know if it happened, like we're not gonna reach out to the hotel and say like, hey, do you realize that something weird happened with your showers? But actually, you know, that's what they were changing, like the temperatures and the gas and whatever. Now this is fine, right? I mean, like, it's not that bad because every, every time I tell you something, I tell, it is fun, but then I'm telling you, well, I mean, like, nothing happens. So, okay, we're good, even though it seems kind of scary. And also, j just, just for the record, I did reach out to the, the, the creator of this meme because I wanted to make sure he was like, he's very sensitive on that, so, I did add his name and everything, Casey Green, thank you. Um, but now let's go to the other, you know, like, like there, there's the other part, like the actors that don't really know what they are doing. I mean, some of them know and they are trying to do things, but uh, let's see the fun side, right? Like many of them don't really, don't really know, like the kitchen, this is the same one that you saw in the beginning. And, the, well, I mean, just another one that comes out of my, out of my head is, uh, there was some actor that said, we compromised Chinese train, well, Chinese train system. And like, okay, well, what is that? And it was a system that basically checks, it's an HR system to know how many people of your crew you have to have on each of the different, um, of the different cars of the train. I didn't even know that was even necessary, but apparently it is, and some people use it. Um, but yeah, so, so you can find all type of things. And, um, well, I mean, a second example. Uh, okay, also, sorry, I, I really love this guy. It just like, it looks like, like so threatening, but it's not, so I thought it, it fit very well in there, but anyway. Um, 
Intelligence. Okay, the second one. Intelligence company. This is one of my favorites, and it's not. not this this one is not funny particularly. It's actually a very interesting legal void in the world. I don't know. It's this person, which we know is a guy. This guy is Latin American, and in his country, well, there's no no really good regulation about this, right? So he can go poking and dumping and anything that he wants to do, and no one says anything. So he created his own intelligence security company, and he sells his services. And he has the website, and you can go, you can pay, and basically what he sells is uh, dumps, and uh, basically all of the information that he steals. Uh, and normally, he, this person claims that, that, that you know, they are actually compromising control systems. Sometimes it's real, I mean, not, not really compromising, but they have some of these like, like HMIs that, we, that he has found and, and, and sent. But sometimes it's, you know, it's like a SQL dump, and then it's like a database, but it just says energy, so he says, this is energy. He has nothing to do, but you know, it proves again an actor that sort of knows doing some things, but doesn't know really what he's getting into by saying ICS. So if you know, you know, already have the skills and then know a bit of what you search on the ICS side, let me tell you, you are already a couple steps far ahead because you can go and find the amazing things that very few people have looked at. And this is my favorite. What happened here is this actor, basically what they said is, you know, guys, beware, we have a German train or rail control system. And we looked at that and yeah, I mean, it, it looked like, I mean, it looked like a video game, but, but to be honest, even though it looks like a video game, most of the machine interfaces that they use for industrial cases, they look like video games from the 80s. So it could be real, right? Um, and also if you have seen a, a train one, we, we've seen some because, you know, when they leak documents and whatever, you see more or less how they look and whatnot. Um, well, this one, we did reverse image lookup, really not that complicated and we realized that it was for train model sets. So basically what this guy was, was threatening, it was just, you know, like, like for our guys in here probably, or I don't know, but the point in here is, you know, if you go and search for this, it's amazing, you can find amazing stuff, but you know, also be careful, try to validate because you can, you know, maybe some annoying researcher is gonna go find it and then come and present in a conference that what you found was not what you thought. And so the next thing is the other type of actor, the other type of activity that we see from these guys is um, activist, activist sharing tutorials. Um, when, when we talk about the tutorials, for example, yeah, th this, is, this is a case of, you know, like one of those very small activist groups in, in a specific region, and what they say is, let's go after Turkish assets. Let's go and find anything we can from Turkey. Let's go, guys, you know, help us. So since we want this help and we want it to be physical, we're gonna tell you how you do it. They send this tutorial, which is only one out of 12, 13, 14, and where, where they present many different tools. They present, I mean, if you want to do it with Metasploit, obviously they present, if you want to do it just like with Shodan, if they present, you know, Ultra VNC, things like, like all of the different tools that you need to put together so that you can do more of these interesting things. And they give some examples with some specific industrial controllers. And, you know, we validated those, we found them. Yeah, what they're doing is, is legit. And, you know, for anyone that wants to learn. And this is not the only one, of course. We have seen that in different languages from different regions. This is an Arabic group that also shared the same. And this one, I, I thought it was even more interesting because actually they give you like this kind of like short list of what you have to do. And this is literally what you have to reproduce if you're interested in reproducing this experiment. I'm, I promise you will find something. You have to, you, what you can do is download Ultra VNC, simple. Visit Shodan, and I'm saying Shodan because it's the most common, but Shodan, Census, Binary Edge, Sumai, Pofa, you name it. Input, this, this search is specifically for, for Shodan, port 5900, which is basically for BNC communications. That, that's how you get to the human machine interfaces. But you could as well just add, I don't know, port 502 or port 102, which are common for controllers, for certain industrial protocols and whatnot. Normally, they are fairly well known, and if you look for ports for industrial protocols, you're gonna find those as well. And you know, it returns the list. You go to VNC Viewer, and you see everything that you got. You get what you fished, and, and you know, you try to figure out if you're interested in any of those documents. But so the researchers, you know, like, yeah, we're talking about actors and it's like, okay, yeah, they're learning, but you know, the researchers already learned that and they've been doing that for 10 years probably. So there's a chance you've already heard of this and it's because, yeah, there are many, many talks. And what you can see there, for example, is that is from Shodan. If you look for Shodan ICS, uh, they immediately get you to a site where they give you some ideas about how you can go and find this industrial uh, type of content. And uh, that Niagara uh, Building Automation System, that's what that stands for, is the same controllers but for buildings. That's basically the change that you have seen over the last five years. 
So if you want to go and find uh, and troll Niagara, please do it in the next five years because otherwise you won't have anything else to find. Uh, but yeah, Niagara is one of the ones that were trolled a ton just because there were a ton uh, of, of systems that were connected to, to internet. And why? Well, because it's super useful, right? You have your building, it doesn't sound so critical, and you can control from wherever you are. It's convenient for the operator and for everyone. Sometimes also tools. We also have some, these guys actually, I believe they're researchers, and I believe they're from Brazil. I don't remember exactly. Maybe they were not. Uh, but the point is they shared this one a lot on Twitter. I, I remember someone mentioned Twitter earlier, and yeah, these are the type of things that you, you can find. And this was just a, a quick uh, crawler that goes and finds for automatic, automatic tank gauges. What is that? It's just tanks that are, I'm going to say like intelligent, to use buzzwords. But basically it tells you what you have in there, how much you have of a certain product, what's the pressure, what's the temperature. Obviously if this is gas or this uh, uh, dangerous chemical, this is kind of like sensitive. If it's not, maybe not, but still, you know, it's fairly easy to find those. This is a crawler that you can use for that. It's in GitHub public. And you don't even need it. You, you can do it just by querying on, on any of the, of the other tools that I have mentioned. And so now, now that you see all, the, all, this, all this picture, I'm actually getting close, closer to the end. The big question is, are these real? I mean, what I'm showing you, is it really a risk? Or, or you know, why, why am I bringing it up? And we have three things to highlight. The first one is, what, what this means is actors, like different types of actors, hackers, name it, not, not like anything complicated, not like anything well-funded resource or anything, just like anyone is getting much easier access to this type of, of learning and figuring out how to find this type of exposed systems. But the truth is that even though we know them, it's not something that has been already solved or that is being already solved. You know, like we're half the way. But most companies, mainly when they are smaller or, or whatever, which is the case of many utilities and many of the services you receive, they, they don't have a clue that this is happening. So if you get, uh, decide to get into this, awareness is already kind of a, a big point. Because the actors are learning and so should we. The second one is more intrusions, more risk. Yeah, nothing has happened in the, in the sense of like they haven't destroyed anything, so physical, not as well that we know. But you know, the more that it happens, the higher the risk. The day that it happens, it's already bad because we're not talking about only data, we're talking about safety, which is the main point for cyber physical. And then um, the publicity of incidents normalizes it. Like who told you, like, like, I hope that if any of you found something in here, a button, and the button says like, hey, I can hurt the person in front of me, you normally probably wouldn't push it. Well, Hopefully. Um, that's kind of the point in here. You don't know what you're doing and you can have a physical impact. And by sharing so much of this and saying like, look what I did, now I showed you, now I'm modified, they normally don't see the effects, but basically it's normalizing it. As if it was something that was, you know, it's, it's just another data problem. It's not, it, it is really, it can be really serious. And so that being said, um, I talked about right now, like, like just for expansion of this topic, I talked about right now only about the actors, about like, low sophistication compromises, but even nation state actors have been researching these. There are some, there's a leak of papers like from a month ago or two uh, from a specific nation state. It's actually public, you've got in the news, we help them do the research and whatnot. And basically they were, they hired a company apparently to tell them what they could do by this, by using this type of internet exposed systems. And one of the examples they said is like, yeah, this, this, is, this is a boat actually. And it just says like, by modifying blah, blah, water ballast, then you can move the, 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 the boat. Whether you can do it or not, there's still a gap, but basically they almost shared basically everything that we discussed right now in a large paper and for a ton of money. And to close this, uh, I just wanted to go with a, you know, like, like with a happy memory instead of, you know, like, like the world's gonna end or anything. I wanna make sure that I'm not adding thought and just saying, you know, guys, this is terrible. Uh, it is something concerning. It is something we should care about. And I hope more people can start getting in research into that. Uh, for example, many of you, if you're into web, if you can find web and internet facing a control system, things like that, please let me know. We'd love to do more research. I don't think anyone is doing that right now. Uh, but the point is, yeah, you know, like nothing, no, nothing has happened from a physical perspective that is really concerning up to date. And right now then our task is, is that as these attacks continue to evolve, we have to make sure that it continues the same way and that it doesn't get to a point where it actually impacts our daily lives. And that's all for me. Thanks for everything. Yep. Yeah, and